Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Conard. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad to welcome you to this worship experience today. Today, we're continuing our series, Reading Through the Gospel of Mark, and we will finish the entire book by Easter. You can read along in, uh, with the reading plan that's on our social media sites or at our website. And whether it's your first time here, if it's your first time connecting, we want to give you a special warm welcome and invite you to get connected in a variety of other ways in the life of the church. You can sign up for our weekly email newsletter by going to our website and clicking on subscribe to the newsletter, share your contact information, and I'll send some updates every uh, Friday to invite you to get connected in other opportunities to grow in your faith with others here at Susanna Wesley. You can also download the Church Center app. You can use that here this morning, here in a few moments. I'll invite you to check in. It's a free download for iOS or Android. You can find uh, upcoming events on the calendar, register for events, and uh, uh, connect with the church in a number of ways with that tool as well. As we begin our worship service this morning, we remind ourselves about who we are and who God has invited us to be. We call it our Susanna Wesley welcome, and I'd like to invite Chris Johnson, our liturgist, to lead us this morning. Will you please stand as you're able? May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. We are Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church, build diverse Christian communities where God's love is in action. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. All people are welcome with no exceptions. You can be who you are, you can be any way you are, and you can be loved. You may be seated. For those of you who are here in the worship center, I invite you to hum along with the music today. For those of you who are connected online, feel free to sing out loud if you like. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to join in the singing of our opening song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you.
today. It is good to be in the Lord's presence, and we would invite you to check in and let us know that you were connected. If you're here in the worship center or if you're worshiping with us online, you can use the Church Center app to check in. Again, it's a free download for iOS or Android. You can use the check-in tab at the bottom of the page to let us know that you're connected today. It's a part of one of our spiritual practices is to connect with worship. And whether you're doing it on Sunday morning or at other times during the week, we invite you to to worship, study, serve, give, and share. These are our five spiritual practices that we do on our own and with other people. And today I want to remind you as well about our invitation uh, to, to, to worship. Um, it is to by ourselves uh, just through five, by praying to give thanks five times a day when you get up when you have three meals and then before you go to bed to just say thank you God for everything. And then uh, when with other people, it's to connect in a worship, worship experience like this. And we're so glad that you're connected in worship today. As a part of every worship service that we have, we spend time in prayer. And one of the opportunities that we have is to pray for other people, to listen for the way that God is speaking to us and to seek God's wisdom and guidance as we move into the future together. You'll see on the screen a number of names of individuals, uh, families, uh, situations that we are keeping in our prayer for a variety of reasons, and we're going to invite you to pray for them today. We'll also have time during this prayer for some time of quiet to reflect on the way that God is speaking to you and to confess our sins, to say we're sorry for our actions that, that we know to be not what God would have in mind for us. So I invite you to take a deep breath, to be present where you are to listen for God's word and join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Oh God, your words spoke all things into being at the very beginning of time. And we know that scriptures promise that at the very end of time, you will be there. And God, you are right here with us now. God, make your presence known to us. Help us to feel the power of your Holy Spirit, a warmth in our soul, something that that leads us, something that guides us, something that encourages us. God, we know that you sustain us and our lives are much less significant without you in it. God, we confess that there are times when when we wish that you weren't around because we say things and do things that that hurt other people. We we make mistakes and we need your forgiveness. We need forgiveness from others and we need to forgive ourselves. And so God, we take time in this time of prayer to ask for those things. So we ask that you would receive our prayers of confession as we say we're sorry, as we reflect on the days that have passed and how we might live differently. Receive, O God, our prayers of confession in this time of quiet. Forgive us, we pray. Wash us clean and make us new. Like rain falls from the sky, like the fresh breeze of spring brings new life, we ask, O God, that you would breathe into our lives the power of your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for the turning of the seasons, for the sun that shines brightly, for the opportunities of new beginnings in so many different ways. And yet even in the midst of these hopeful circumstances, we look around our world and see that there is still hate and violence and division. And God, we need you more than ever. So we pray that you would help us be a part of bringing peace in our community, that you would help us be part of active reconciliation among people groups, among friends and family where there's division, where there is violence. God, we ask that you would lead us and guide us, that you would encourage us and strengthen us, and that you would watch over us all of our days. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who teaches us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Listen to God's word for us from the Old Testament, a reading from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, and when I make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah, it won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant with me, even though I was their husband, declares the Lord. No, this is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my instructions within them and engrave, and engrave them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. They will no longer need to teach each other to say, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sins. Listen to God's word for us from the New Testament, a reading from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. In the same way, Christ also didn't promote himself to become a high priest. Instead, it was the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. During his days on earth, Christ offered prayers and requests with loud cries and tears as his sacrifices to the one who was able to save him from death. He was heard because of his godly devotion. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. After he had been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him. He was appointed by God to be a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. I invite you now to the listen to the words and music of Heal Our Land. You take our lives, flawed yet beautiful. Restore, refine. Lord, you're merciful. Redeem, revive, Spirit of God. Breathe on your church. Pour out your presence. Speak through your word. We pray in every nation. Christ be known. Our hope and our salvation, Christ alone. New power, new wine, as divisions fall. One church, one bride, Jesus Lord of all. With one voice we cry, Spirit of God, breathe on your church, pour out your presence, speak through your word. We pray in every nation, Christ be known, our hope and our salvation, Christ alone. So God, we pray to you, humble ourselves again. Lord, would you hear our cry? Lord, will you hear our land? That every eye will see, that every heart will know. The one who took our sin, the one who died and rose. And when your kingdom comes, and when at last you call, We'll rise to worship you alone. Spirit of God, breathe on your church. Pour out your presence. Speak through your word. We pray in every nation. Christ be known. Our hope and our salvation. Christ alone.
Would you please stand as you are able for a reading of Scripture? Listen to God's word for us from the Gospel of Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Jesus and his followers came into Jericho. As Jesus was leaving Jericho, together with his disciples and a sizable crowd, a blind beggar named Martinus, Timaeus' son, was sitting beside the road. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. Many scolded him, telling him to be quiet, but he shouted even louder, Son of David, show me mercy. Jesus stopped and said, Call him forward. They called the blind man. Be encouraged. Get up. He's calling you. Throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man see, said, Teacher, I want to see. Jesus said, Go. Your faith has healed you. At once he was able to see, and he began to follow Jesus on his way. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. You may be seated. Well, it is tournament time. The NCAA basketball tournament has begun. The games are well underway, and it is an uphill battle, as you know, to the Final Four every year. Every year it gets played. Um, We're so glad to be back to the tournament, Um, much less the title game. Now, are are the number one seeds going to make it? I don't know. They still could. Gonzaga and Baylor, Michigan and Illinois, they are still in the tournament. Um, But there have been some big upsets. Uh, The NCAA.com says every single bracket that has been completed has been busted. No one has a perfect bracket remaining at this point. Uh, Things don't always end up how we think they're going to end up. Now, of course, when you're a basketball team and you're entering a tournament, you have some picture, you, you have a vision of what the future might be. You want to make it to the title game. And, and so you might ask yourself, what does it take for us to get there? Well, in the scripture passages that we're going to be taking a closer look at today, Jesus asked the question, what do you want? What do you want? And we'll move back a few verses to take a look at when this, the disciples are asking for something very specific. We'll see if they get what they want uh, as we take a closer look at the gospel. We're looking, uh, moving through the gospel according to Mark, and it's a series where we are looking at this very earliest gospel. We uh, scholars believe that Mark was the very first one that was written down, and it may have been composed by uh, by an author, by a a, a composer, uh, a, a, a scribe who was putting together the memories, the stories that Peter had told. Peter, one of the great apostles, one of those 12 that had walked with Jesus over all of these years, he shared his story before he died, and we have that in the gospel of Mark. We're reading through this entire gospel in the days that are leading up to Easter, and you can join us in that journey. You can find the reading plan at our website, or you can uh, go to the, our Facebook page or YouTube channel and find the daily reading plans as well. Now, two weeks ago, we asked the question, does the reality of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of God? We read the story of Jesus walking on the water and what it was like for the disciples that were out there on the boat, and, and we remember that God is right at hand, ready to help us when we cry out to God. God is always greater than the storms that we may face in our life. God always walks with us, even though it may seem that it's impossible for God to be here in the midst of these circumstances. Last week, we considered Jesus' question for Peter, a different question last week. This one was, who do you say that I am? And remember that all of us at some point in our life answer that question, whether it's intentional or not, even not answering the question is a way of answering it. Who do you say that Jesus is? And this week, we look at this other question, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? In the scripture passage for today, Jesus asked a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And just a few verses before, a few of the disciples are asking Jesus for something. It was in our reading plan for today. I want to go back and take a closer look. Along with Peter, James and John were in Jesus' inner circle of disciples. They are at the center of many stories of the gospel. They left everything they had to follow Jesus. And here they are. Uh, they they are, are, have been living their lives following Jesus wherever he goes, seeing him heal and connect with people and tell stories and teach and live into what it means to be the kingdom of God. They loved Jesus. They left their lives for him. And yet it seems that they still don't understand what Jesus is all about. 
That's one of the great things about being a follower of Jesus, isn't it? We can be following Jesus for years and years, and it seems like, well, I still don't quite understand what Jesus is all about. If you find yourself in that place sometimes, we we know that you're in good company with James and John, uh, all of the disciples. Uh, Hear these words from Mark chapter 10, verses 35. James and John, Zebedee's sons, came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. We want you to do for us whatever we ask. Have you ever had a conversation like that? <laughs> has, has someone ever come to you and said, a, a, a child maybe, or, or a coworker, perhaps, a family member or friend, I'm going to say something, and, and all you need to do right now is just say yes. Just say yes. Just, just go ahead and, and agree with it. And don't even worry what I'm going to say. It, it's going to be fine. Just say yes. It's like they're doing a Jedi mind trick on Jesus. We do for us whatever you ask. Maybe some of you Star Wars fans out there, these aren't the droids that you're looking for. Well, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Now, with a lead-in like that, what do you think? How's the conversation going to go from there? I don't know, but when I hear something like that, I start to get a little bit suspicious. Let's see how Jesus responds in the next verse, chapter, verse 36. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. Well, Jesus asked him right back. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus doesn't fall for it. He's not gonna, he wants to find out what they want before he agrees to say a one word or another. And James and John continue in Mark 10, 37. They said, allow one of us to sit on your right and the other on your left when you enter your glory. Now, what a request. Are you serious, James and John? This is what you're asking for at this time? You've been walking with Jesus all of, these, all of this time, and yet it still seems that you're focused on what's in it for me. What's in it? For me, James and John seem to be asking, help us sit on your right and left. Jesus, just, just do for us what we're going to ask. Now, James and John aren't the only ones who have missed the point. You remember that, that Peter, as well, misses the point over and over. And in this, uh, just after he uh, has his great confession that says, you are the Lord, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, we read about Jesus' prediction of his suffering. And, and Peter says, I, I don't believe you, Jesus. From Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 33, then Jesus began to teach his disciples, the human one must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and the legal experts, and be killed. And then, after three days rise from the dead, he said this plainly, but Peter asked, but Peter took hold of Jesus and scolding him, began to correct him. Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, then sternly corrected Peter, get behind me, Satan, you're not thinking God's thoughts, but human thoughts. Get behind me, Satan. Can you imagine something more harsh or more extreme coming out from the words of Jesus to his disciples? He's serious. Man, Peter really missed the point here. James, John, Peter, the other nine disciples, us. You ever feel like you miss the point sometimes when it comes to following after Jesus? I know I do sometimes. Now, it's easy to look at this story when you read a text like this and say, Peter, are you serious? James and John, is this really what you're asking for? Uh, For Peter, this is a case of basic manners. Don't don't talk back to Jesus, okay? This person is Jesus. He's God's son, the, the son of God in the flesh. He knows what he's saying. James and John, just calm down. You're already one of the 12 disciples. What more do you want? What more do you want? And yet, don't we find ourselves in the same place at times? Like Peter, how often do I try to tell God how things are going to be in my life? I want to tell God what I have in mind for how things are going to happen, and I don't always listen very well to what Jesus has to say to me. Love your enemies? Pray for those who persecute you? Come on, Jesus, you didn't really mean that, did you? The author and humorist uh, Mark Twain uh, wrote these words. It's not the parts of the Bible that I can't understand that bother me. It's the parts that I do understand. Do you have trouble with this? I know that I do at times. Like James and John, how often do I believe that being assertive makes a difference to God? Is that having people know my name is success. I don't always use the same words that James and John do, but I ask the very same thing at times. God, will you make me important? Whenever we find ourselves in a place like that, we have missed the point. We've missed the point. Now, Jesus' response to James and John was one of those rare occasions when Jesus did not do what was asked of him. There are many times throughout the scriptures where we see that someone has come to Jesus for a request, many times asking to be healed, and he responds positively. He does what they're asking for, but not here. 
He tells James and John, I can't do that for you. I can't do that for you. Now, this is in contrast to the story of the blind beggar, Bartimaeus, from our passage of Scripture for today, which starts in uh, verse 46 and 47. I just want to read these again for you. Jesus and his followers came into Jericho. As Jesus was leaving Jericho, together with his disciples and a sizable crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, Timaeus' son, was sitting beside the road. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, did you notice the difference between this initial conversation that this blind beggar has with Jesus and the one that James and John had with Jesus? They co- he comes to Jesus and said, when he heard that he was walking by, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. James and John went to Jesus and said, teacher, do for us whatever we ask. There's a big difference here in this initial conversation. Where do we find ourselves when we approach Jesus? Jesus calls the blind man over and asks the very same question that he asked James and John. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, teacher, I want to see. The blind man only seeks mercy from Jesus. This is his first request, have mercy on me. And only when Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you, does he say, I want to see. He asks for something that will make a profound difference in his life, and he asks for something immediate. He knows where he is lacking when Jesus asks him that question. And Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. At once he was able to see, and he began to follow Jesus along the way. And I wish I would respond to Jesus like that more often, all the time. God, I don't have it all together. Jesus, have mercy on me. What do I want you to do for me? Isn't it obvious? I want to see with your eyes. I want to look at people, my neighbors, as you would see them. I want to love with a love that seems to know no boundaries. I really do want to be able to love my enemies and pray for those who persecute me, but, but it's just really hard. Will you help me? I want to serve you without a promise of reward. I want to make a difference in your kingdom. Lord Jesus, I want to follow you. The good news is we don't have to get it right all the time to follow Jesus. It's not really what being a Christian is all about. We don't have it all. You don't have to have it all together before you begin to follow. God walks with us and helps us begin to get it right more and more often. James and John have been following Jesus for nearly two years, and here we find them asking to be put in places of honor right after he told them that he was about to be put to death. Jesus says, I can't do that for you. Instead, let me teach you about what it's like to follow me, what it's actually like to be one of my disciples. It means that you take a path of service, but don't worry, I'm going there first. You can follow me, Jesus tells James and John. You can follow me in a life of service, Jesus tells us today. Peter scolds Jesus when he first predicts that he's going to die. He talks back to the Lord of all creation. Get behind me, Satan, Jesus says, but this doesn't disqualify Peter. He still follows Jesus. So whatever it is for you, I don't know, whatever it is that you're holding on to, just you can let it go. Even if you know that you've messed up, even if you know that you've made mistakes in the past, you're in good company here with the disciples, James and John and Peter, they all messed up. It doesn't mean that you can't follow Jesus. So keep following. Seek to be a part of of God's work in the world. Put God's love in action. The invitation for us from Scripture is that we might say the very same thing that this blind beggar said on the side of the road, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And when we ask for God's mercy, instead of telling God how things are going to be, we can be healed and forgiven and freed. Will you pray with me? God, we confess that we are too often like James and John, that we want to be the center of attention, that we, want us, that, that we want you to bless us. And too often we are like Peter, that we want to tell you how things are going to be and don't listen very well. So forgive us, O oh God. Free us from the ways that we have bound ourselves. Help us to be your disciples. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Forgive us, we pray, and encourage us to live a life 
that is really life, a life that's filled with your spirit, a life of service in which we can receive encouragement and be encouraged from others and most of all by the power of your Holy Spirit. God, give us mercy. Strengthen and guide us now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Here at Susanna Wesley, we uh, seek to be about gathering stories about the way that God has been at work in the lives of people and the way that uh, we have been an encouragement and, and the way that God works in incredible ways. And we call those our Susanna Wesley stories. And today, um, we have a story from Coralie Evans. Uh, let's take a look. I'm Coralie Evans, and I've been coming to Susanna Wesley since August of 1993 when we moved to Topeka and I was looking for a church to attend. So I have just always attended wherever I've, I've been, um, looked for a church through some of the college years. It wasn't regular at all. As a matter of fact, it was none, as sometimes happens. But then um, we had kids and, and I wanted them to, to come to church, so I've come to church and have brought three children through Susanna Wesley. And as we pulled up into the parking lot, people came out holding an umbrella to get us in because it was raining that day. So I thought, well, this is a very welcoming church and I've just been here ever since. Uh, in my married life, I've been married for 50 years now and, and we've moved uh, there for a while we moved every three years so I would just go from one Methodist church to another Methodist church and it was very comforting to have that familiarity uh, and of course there was always Jesus was taught I was trying to find churches where I was hearing him there's there's no one else to go to you know in hard times and in good times there's no one else to go to so. <sighs> our daughter was killed in a car accident just before just a few days before her 22nd birthday so she was buried from this church. The congregation stood with me. The minister stood with me. Some very, very faithful retired ministers in this church stood with me. So that's when I'm particularly glad because it's something. It's, it's an immeasurable, immeasurable comfort. Immeasurable. Yes. Uh, we had a wedding here too. Our oldest daughter, um, Emily, um, was, let's see, 22 years ago now, I think. Um, she was married from this church, so we have happy memories and sad ones, too. And all of those in between, all of the times of the, the kids in the, the bell choirs and the, all, all, of, all of those things that they've all, all the kids did. Well, I hope it's filled with children, and I hope it's filled with young adults and middle-aged people and senior citizens. I would like all ages to be here because there's something for everyone and we all need each other. As a part of Susanna Wesley, Coralie's story is your story. And you help make stories like this possible when you support us to be about God's work through our church. We invite you to give to support our ministry funding plan. You can do that by uh, sh uh, texting any dollar amount to 84321. You can uh, drop a check in the, uh, on the welcome table in the basket there if you want to give in the Church Center app. We invite you to do this as well. Everything that we do here um, is about uh, building diverse Christian communities where you can find support in good times and bad, a place for all generations where we put God's love in action. So we invite you now uh, to give, to support that work, and to pause to say thank you, God, for everything. Now I invite you to the word, listen to the words and music of our closing song today. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, Thy presence my light. God of 
of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision. Oh, ruler of all. I'm so glad that you're here to connect with worship, that you connected with us online, that wherever you are in your life, that you are connected here in this moment of this experience of worshiping God and seeking to follow after, uh, seeking to follow after Jesus. I hope that you found this experience to be meaningful and significant and that you leave today encouraged and inspired to to live a life filled with love. When Jesus asks us, what do you want me to do for you? That we might say, have mercy on us. Be our vision of life that really is life. Go now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.